just in case anybody missed the um, the horrible. The horrible situation via the military industrial complex. When I say miss, I mean, you know, doubting. Doubting the things that we've learned about harp, pollution of the atmosphere, the destruction of the planet genome, if you will, the planet spirit, by altering weather. In altering weather, man once again at war with God believes that he knows best. He must improve upon God. This is Luciferian. He must now cool the planet, organize rain in some places, drought in others. And of course, the technology of weather modification now is being used for warfare in many cases by our own government against us for whatever agenda they want while well, the agenda being global warming causing a drought in the southwest unnaturally as they've done and doing it during the bush administration and now obama and then unbelievable rainstorms and uh, problems in the northeast and using it all for mind control for this tax the willingness to murder the planet, to get their way for filthy lucre. I blame the president, the military industrial complex, and eventually we'll have a list of uh, co-conspirators. These people should all be immediately incarcerated. They are your enemy. They are our enemy. And as I watch them destroy the Southwest, the plants and the animals, I cry out for justice. I want justice. I want somebody to pay for what the, I want them to pay for what they've done. But they control everything. This is the evilest planet in the history of all planets. This is the evilest and stupidest nation in the history of all nations. The United States may have had a good beginning, but it is the absolute moron of morons in all universes the people here uh, are responsible it's you know i used to blame the military industrial complex now having been on twitter and facebook i realize who the real culprits are the willingness to human st stupidity in order again to sow to the system which will only reap death and pain and suffering and war has been done by the majority of the Americans. So you get what you deserve. I divorce myself from the genocide they are creating in the name of goodness. I watch retardation upon retardation of, of uh, shit humanity. Believing themselves good pure scum. The environmental movement has developed a single-minded obsession with the supposed effects of carbon dioxide on the global climate. Rather than CO2 gas, however, the technologies that are now being proposed to mitigate this supposed problem might be the real cause of our coming environmental calamity. This is the GRTV Backgrounder on Global Research TV. For decades now, we have been told to be afraid of the long-term effects of man-made carbon dioxide on our climate. Seemingly every day some new storm, drought, warm spell, or cold snap is featured on the news, with government-funded scientists warning us that this is a sign of things to come unless the world reduces its CO2 production. The problem, of course, is that this is a third-rate scientific hoax propagated on the strength of the public's ignorance of the underlying science, or lack thereof. The models and predictions used to scare the public into believing that CO2 is driving climate and will continue to do so in an increasingly dangerous fashion 
share the distinction of being universally wrong in their predictions of trends over the past 15 years, yet we are still asked to believe in the long-term validity purpose. of these same falsified models. As Robinson et al. noted in their 2007 study, Environmental Effects of Increased Atmospheric Carbon Dioxide, published by the Oregon Institute of Science and Medicine, Predictions of harmful climatic effects due to future increases in hydrocarbon use and minor greenhouse gases like CO2 do not conform to current experimental knowledge. Also in 2007, J. Scott Armstrong, a researcher at the University of Pennsylvania and the author of Long Range Forecasting, a standard textbook on the principles of forecasting, co-authored an audit of the procedures that the IPCC used for its global warming projections, finding that these procedures violated 72 of the 89 relevant principles of scientific forecasting. Last year, the Journal of Geophysical Research Atmospheres published a study showing that the climate prediction models examining periods of less than 30 years on the geographical scale of continents are riddled with inaccuracies. Earlier this year, the UK's Met Office was forced to raise downward their projections for temperature increase over the next four years after a 15-year standstill in global annual temperatures. Ironically, this divergence from the continuous temperature increases that had been predicted by the CO2 alarmists is now being blamed on natural variability, including the cycles of changes in solar activity, which leaked drafts of the IPCC's AR5 report due out next year indicate have been vastly underestimated. Sadly, the fear-mongering hype and misleading predictions on this issue have become so internalized that there is a subsection of the population that is now willing to question whether every conceivable event in the galaxy is the result of man-made CO2, even near-Earth asteroids. The brainwashing. Our science guy, Bill Nye, and, you know, talk about something else that's falling from the sky, uh, and that is an asteroid. Uh, what, what's coming our way? Is this an effect of, of perhaps global warming, or is this just some no, meteoric no. occasion? Except it's all science, and it is the word meteorology and the word meteor come from the same root. So, uh... That so many are concentrating so much time and attention to the question of carbon dioxide, a trace gas in the atmosphere which itself is only partially man-made, is only to be expected. Scientists, pundits, writers, and businessmen are only responding to the market incentives that are at play. Governments and universities around the world are now sinking billions of dollars a year into grants to fund research related to the supposed CO2 threat, and entire industries such as carbon trading and carbon sequestration are developing in response to this interest. Quite simply, too much money and potential political power is at stake for the threat of global warming to be revealed as a false alarm. One of the most worrying possibilities to arise from this trend, however, is the political legitimization of a concept that, ironically, has the potential to become a real threat to our environment. Geoengineering. What if we really were in a jam, okay, and we wanted to really cool the earth in a hurry, okay, we didn't want to wait 40, 50 years, is there another option, okay? And we explore scientific solutions uh, that come under the rubric of geoengineering, where we limit solar radiation from entering the earth's atmosphere by having airplanes disperse sulfur into the air. The particles reflect light back out into space, thereby having a cooling effect on the planet. Aren't we brilliant? And you can also apparently do this using giant balloons as well. Whether this idea is right or some other idea is right, I think it's almost certain that we will eventually think of cleverer things to do than just putting sulfur in. That if engineers and scientists really turn their minds to this, it's amazing how we can affect the planet. The one thing about this is it gives us extraordinary leverage. This, this improved science and engineering will, whether we like it or not, give us more and more leverage to affect the planet, to control the planet, to give us weather and climate control, not because we plan it, not because we want it, just because science delivers it to us bit by bit. The practice of geoengineering is now well over half a century old. As early as the late 1940s, American mathematician John von Neumann was researching weather modification and its potential uses in climatic warfare for the U.S. Department of Defense. In the 1950s, early cloud-bursting experiments were performed by Wilhelm Reich, and in 1956, Dr. Walter Russell was writing of the potential for complete weather control. In the 1960s, Dr. Bernard Vonnegut, brother of the famous writer, 
vastly improved the techniques then in use by employing silver iodide crystals in the cloud seeding mixture. Silver iodide's hygroscopic qualities ensure water particles quickly bond with its crystalline structure. As the recent documentary Skywatcher points out, the process of cloud seeding is now so widely and routinely employed that it is having profound effects on our climate. Small cloud seeding aircraft such as bombardier jets and high altitude propeller planes deliver their payloads using silver iodide flares that are ignited by remote control. The flares are typically fixed to the wings of the aircraft and release the silver and salt mixture high into the stratosphere so it slowly drifts down into the moist air below. When the pilots of the cloud seeding aircraft can see ice forming on the wings, they know liquid water is present in the air and there's the potential to create storm clouds. So how many sorties do cloud seeding aircraft fly in order to make it rain or snow? The answer is as many as possible. The more aerosols, the more chance of condensation that makes thick rain clouds. Commercial air traffic helps to facilitate the rain by plowing through the field of silver mist, emitting the superheated steam that freezes into expanding clouds. Shade from the artificial clouds drops the temperature below, decreasing the air pressure and creating a low channel that flows like a river, drawing in the moist air. This can allow some ocean storms to make landfall that might otherwise be repelled by higher onshore pressures. Given that CO2 is not the problem it is made out to be, coupled with the admitted advent of modern weather modification technologies in DoD research programs, it is impossible not to inquire into the possible links between the current push toward geoengineering and the military-industrial complex. Last year I had the chance to talk to Professor Michelle Chosodovsky of the Center for Research on Globalization about the past, present, and future of weather warfare technology. Well, first of all, I should mention that uh, weather warfare is not something which is recent. It was used during the Vietnam War. Cloud seeding techniques which were intended to block uh, enemy supply lines. But uh, in the course of the 1990s, it has become increasingly sophisticated. And I'm, I'm referring to the development, what is called the High Frequency Active Auroral Research Program, HARP, uh, which is based in Gakona, Alaska, uh, which uh, is, uh, is, a, is a system of, of high frequency uh, antennas uh, directed to the, uh, to the outer atmosphere and which then can be used to trigger uh, climatic instability uh, in different parts of the world, as well as disrupt communication systems. Uh, we talk about NMOD, environmental modification techniques for military use. I think what is important to point out is that the United States, as well as Russia, have these capabilities, but particularly the United States, uh, in relation to HARP, and uh, they have acknowledged that they intend to use these technologies of weather modification, which can trigger floods, hurricanes, droughts, earthquakes um, against enemies, namely, in the present context, Syria, Iran, North Korea, China, Russia, okay? Um, and uh, and they, uh, they um, explicitly state that these uh, weather modification techniques have both offensive as well as defensive applications and can be used for deterrence purposes. Um, in other words, we are in presence of something which is very diabolical. Uh, I consider this to be the ultimate weapon of mass destruction. Arizona. Kill each other, you know. Uh, well, they're all just gonna kill each other, you know. Uh, it's gonna be very expensive. It's gonna be very expensive.
then this was published um, uh, called Science and Mind of Boston Magazine by Carolyn Y. Johnson uh, of the Boston Globe. Large-scale projects that could temper or reverse the effects of climate change by blocking some incoming sunlight or manipulating the atmosphere have long been unpopular on two opposing fronts. On one side are those worried about the unintended consequences and the doomsday scenarios that could be set off by careless experiments. Where have these people been living? Uh, don't they look up? <laughs> on the other uh, are those who believe that such research is important, but to support it now will detract from the urgent need to cut greenhouse gas emissions that are driving the global temperature rise. The result, argues Harvard professor, uh, University uh, professor of physics, David W. Keith, is an impasse. No government framework regulating when and how such research can be done with very little funding for the work. Um, okay, so people in general who read um, the Boston Globe believe that, you know, something needs to be done about climate change that, that man is causing. They think that it's going to be geoengineering but that there's no funding and no geoengineering going on right now. So the public is saying, well, there's nothing like that. Those are just jets in the sky. And I can tell you from having been here in drought land that it's man, that, it, that it, the, the drought and the climate change that you're experiencing is all man-made completely by the military industrial complex. So a new seasonal drought outlook for the U.S., calls for U.S. drought to persist or develop even more in the areas that have suffered the most from low precipitation over the last year. The Southwest, that's us, Texas. Uh, the Southern Rockies, that's just north of us. The High Plains, as well as Southern Georgia, Alabama, and Florida. At least through the end of April. So they're saying that in April it will improve. Why? When every time there's a storm they spray, that, and what that does is it moves the storm off to the north. It... Uh, it, it stops it. They're not seeding the clouds here. Uh, they've dried it up. There's no snow. There's no um, nothing. And they killed the, uh, the juniper trees, or not juniper, but the uh, pinyon trees in Santa Fe died, m most of them, a few years ago. And they, it was due to a, a beetle, they said. But it was because there was a drought that then caused the beetle situation. In other words, it was from the constant spraying. Back at that time, around 2002, when they all died, uh, the cloud, it was blocked out here permanently here in Arizona to the extent that even movies that were made at that time that we went and saw were completely whited out, where usually here there are beautiful blue skies. Okay. So they say the U.S. drought outlook, a product of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, uses a combination of short and medium-term forecasts long-term climate models, and several other climatological benchmarks, such as soil moisture, to predict how drought conditions will change over the coming months regionally. The outlook released Thursday re replaces the forecast made on January 17th and is valid through April 30th. The most significant change to this week's release is reflected in the forecast for improvement in the Four Corners region of the Southwest. That's us. That's just north and west of us in New Mexico. Uh, and it's actually New Mexico, uh, Nevada, uh, Arizona, and is it a piece of Colorado that's there All the, where the four converge? The four corners, meaning that the four states converge, which is a center of huge drought. Or is it Utah? I, I'm sorry. It, it's, it's either, you know, it's like, I'm sorry, now I'm being completely ignorant. Now, let me see here. Here's the four corners. Okay, it's New Mexico, Colorado, um, not not Nevada. It's Utah, Utah, Colorado, New Mexico, and Arizona. That's and right in the corner where they all converge are the four corners. I'm sorry, Nevada is um, not a part of the four corners. It is Utah. So there's your geology lesson. I knew that. I've been to the four corners to the monument there and taken pictures there, and it's just been a while. So anyway so there it is i've looked at the map and corrected myself okay so the four corners read good thing i'm reading this rather than just kind of you know trying to remember it and tell you across the lower 48 states um uh, 56 well, well let me just say this back up a little since the start of the year uh, occasional but significant rains have eased the short-term drought in arizona 
That's true. They have had more in the north. Now, current conditions and favorable odds of above normal precipitation in the region have increased the chance of recovery. So that's what they're saying based on the models, which factor out uh, man-made intervention. Across the lower 48 states, 56.84% of the land is under drought conditions, according to the U.S. Drought Monitor, and I believe that is completely uh, created by these people. Uh, shift down from the, and, there, and I'll get to the reasoning. I, know, I, I think I know what the reason is, is and why they're doing it, or at least one good reason. However, the more severe impacts, the exceptional drought category ex expanded to 6.85% from 6.37%, so it increased. The expansion of drought is the hardest in, in the hardest hit areas of the High Plains and Central Georgia has persisted slowly all winter, and the re region has seen little rainfall. The few improvements that were recorded were largely due to a strong frontal storm that blew over the Midwest and across the east uh, coast between January 29 and 31. The storm system led to tornado outbreaks across the mid-Atlantic and the southeast. Of course, I believe those are caused as well by the same program. But it also brought heavy precipitation to those regions and to areas as far north as New York that led to a single category improvements all across the south and mid Midwest. However, the short-term rains are no guarantee of long-term drought relief. So it's a, it's a combination of drought, then heavy rainfall that does not help the drought, then back to drought again. And all you have to do is look up as the storm system's coming in and the planes are flying, spraying everything in the world, uh, uh, whiting out the sky ahead of the storm system that will either rain too much or they'll move the rain on so you don't get any. And of course, if we continue to get no rain, which I believe is we're in that program again, um, the juniper trees will then be next and it will turn to a sand desert here. We don't have sand. We have gr low grasses. Uh, we used to have pinyons, juniper trees, and, and so forth. What will happen is they will destroy the, they, what is happening is that the government of the United States and other governments who are participating are destroying the, the, the land, the resources, animals, they're murdering the planet in order to get their way for the money for the global warming taxation initiative and are willing to kill anything in their way, Obama being the, the you know, a great proponent of that. He's uh, championing the murder of the planet to get his way. But this is nothing unusual for Satanists, for Luciferians. This is, if they could, you know, destroy the entire planet and everyone in it and the rest of the solar system and any other damage they could do in the name of science and progress, they'll do it. And that's the net result, as I said in my um, kind of um, psychedelic sort of uh, rant yesterday, which was just a, um, yeah, I'm not even sure what I was doing there yesterday, but I just went ahead and did it. <laughs> okay. In the next week, more heavy storms, such as the one currently barreling down on the Northeast are expected to bring precipitation and short-term relief from in the mid-Atlantic and the Southeast. The drought is expected to persist across the central plains where light precipitation is expected for the coming week. And there are a few indicators for more precipitation the rest of the season. Things look a little better in the northern plains in the upper Midwest, where significant snowpack boosts the prospect of a wet spring. Last week marked the 33rd consecutive week in which more than half the land area of the contigu contiguous United States had been engulfed by drought. And the 32nd consecutive week in which more than 10% of the area was under an extreme drought or worse. And this historic drought rolls on through a dry winter, the chances of recovery rest increasingly on a wetter than average spring, which I don't believe will have because they keep, they are able through the technology to make sure that we don't ever get water again. Now I know that in my begging the Lord to intervene in 2002, and he told me that he'll deal with it. So I trust that. That was a, a strong word and a sure word and a repetitive word that I had received to let the Lord handle things like the evil people, not just the drought. Uh, we're talking about a lot more than just drought now. We're talking about environmental damage where I believe these people, beginning with the Obama administration and everyone that works for them and, every, and the rest of the military industrial, everyone that's involved in this need to be held accountable and need to be um, brought up on criminal charges and put away. I mean, if I went to destroy 
your land, your your atmosphere, and you're a farmer, and you go broke, and and then you know, and your life is broken because they want some extra money for taxes. Is that not the most incredible evil you've ever heard? That they have no regard. The 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 left, and this has been proven historically, you know. And and I know what you're going to say. Well, what about the right? Well, look, the people that you don't like on that are conservatives. Okay, which to me. You're not a conservative unless you believe in God. I mean, I mean, you know, the word conservative is ridiculous. Conserve, that is conserve the um, moral tenets of the Bible, let's say. That would be conservative. And radical would be go into a war against God and do everything you can to go against every tenet of the Bible and every moral and every commandment to prove that you, man, are superior and you're so effing wonderful that we should all bow down to you. Obama, Mr. All Smiles, Mr. Gladhander, Mr. Con Artist, Mr. Charismatic, the rock star, goes around um, like he cares about anything and anyone. And you forget, this is the drone king. He loves to, uh, he, he took out Alawaki's, uh, I, I don't know how you pronounce it, Alawaki, Alawaki's son, uh, with a drone strike that killed about 30 or 40 people around Alawaki. <laughs> uh, the, the kid, he's a 16-year-old boy. You know, and having no regard whatsoever for the uh, collateral damage and all the kids that have been uh, killed uh, because drone strikes leave collateral damage. Why, you know, this is a, a, a person that is a U.S. citizen who didn't do anything wrong, who's guilty of being the son of Alawaki, a, 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 a guy they believe is an Al Qaeda terrorist, Al Qaeda, the CIA's uh, best creation to create an enemy, Al Qaeda, that we can then have lots of funding and lots of taxes to go after. Was it uh, Ike? Dwight D. Eisenhower said, beware of the military-industrial complex. Well, this is what he was talking about. I've seen the damage in California from turning off the water from the Colorado River uh, to the Imperial Valley and to the central uh, area there uh, along the I-5 from north of Bakersfield as you drive up uh, toward uh, San Francisco and towards Sacramento, you have, uh, you know, all the, that land was, far, was vital farmland. And there are little signs along the uh, freeway, along the I-5 that say, you know, Congress did this. And, you know, there, and you find out that it was because of a, a minnow that was not even indigenous to the area. So they made it up. They just turned the water off. You're living. In, I, I don't see how you could say, well, gee, you know, if we don't watch out, we're going to become Greece or we're going to become like... Uh, you, we're going to become like, you know, you'll have a guy like Stalin in there if you don't watch out. It's becoming a totalitarian police state, you know, run by the, the, the military-industrial complex. Uh, I guess that was proven when Kennedy was shot. He went against the uh, Federal Reserve, part of the military. That, which to me, is part of the military-industrial complex. And um, so to me, we're living in a totalitarian regime. It's a soft tyranny in the sense that you know people are not rounded up and put into camps and whatnot and but we've seen um you know dhs uh, load up on one point i don't know two or three maybe at this point it's three billion rounds of ammunition and thousands of trucks many designed to haul prisoners off to where fema camps somewhere where they're already staffed and they're even advertising for new employees uh and they're advertising for snipers that will um Make sure that people, if they try to escape or whatever, will be taken out. These are, would be American citizens. So I don't know if you, you, you say that we could better watch out or tyranny will come. I think you have to, you know, you, I think you have to absolutely, um, you know, tell yourselves that if you, <laughs> that if you don't wake up, you're not going to understand what kind of situation you're in. So when the Lord told me, I will take care of this. He wasn't just speaking, I'm now a new revelation to me, so I'll share it with you. He wasn't just talking about, uh, you know, the chemtrails, which are really geoengineering, which has been going on for, you know, decades, actually. Since World War II, there's been massive research on this, as we heard from the audio there. But, uh, and I'll give you the credit on that audio. In fact, I'll, I'll uh, when I post this, I'll just, I'll, refine that video and post that because I, I mean that was a whole video production done that you know it's I would think that people that 
called themselves liberals and people that called themselves conservatives, okay? I would think that every one of us would have a stake in this. Because when you say left, now you mean, when you say left today, you mean the military industrial complex. You know, the right also, you mean the military industrial complex. Is that interesting? It's amazing how the news media is going along with the military industrial complex totalitarian tactics. And they're just going along with all of it. So that would mean to me that the, quote, left wing media would be totalitarian. So they wouldn't be left wing, you know, in the sense of help the little guy struggle against the evil corporation or whatever it is that they're, you know, the, looking out for the little guy, for the individual. That used to be what the deal with, with liberals was, a compassion. Um, there's no compassion signing up with a big beast and then helping, aiding and abetting it. Uh, it. You know, probably at some point they'll cheer on because of, again, I brought up this gay rights issue and all this, which is, uh, again, a ruse. It's got nothing to do with what's going on. We're talking about this while there's the backdrop of, you know, a genocide of the planet going on. And then we have to have this uh, equality arguments, marriage equality, income equality, all, all of this, as if the government is actually in the business of making things equal for people. When did that ever happen? They're a pecking order, uh, bar none, where you, you toe the line of Satan, and that's what it, people can't see that. I mean, I think I'm a kook when I say that. So, But it really is spiritual. If your eyes are open, you can see that it's, <clears throat> it's a program, an agenda that's driven by an unseen force. Call it the fallen angels, call it the watchers. Call it Lucifer, call it Satan, call it the aliens. What, I don't care what you, know, what you want to call it, but they've been terraforming this planet now for as long as, you know, about, I've been aware of it for about 15 years, I would say. Oh, uh, let's see. Since about in the 90s, since about the late 90s, okay? So I've been watching this since the late 90s. You know, we would watch them chem the whole sky in L.A. when I was out there. And I guess about 1995, I became aware of geoengineering and I was also aware from having seen the planes out at uh, in Victorville is where they fly a lot of planes out of also out at uh, near Edwards Air Force Base Edwards Air Force Base in the uh, Mojave Desert there and also out of Mojave there's a, uh, a hub for say FedEx and different planes to come in but I've also seen the planes there so I've seen three evidences of uh, the planes flying and and of course there's other bases I'm sure where these planes are flying, plus they're also mixing jet fuels to also do the same thing of putting these pollutants in the atmosphere, which are causing drought for the, the main purpose of which wasn't to cause rain and storms. That was just a spot thing of seeding the clouds to get extra rain that would be unnatural. Storms that were stronger to push the global warming climate change agenda, um, which they're now including global cooling as part of the agenda based on lies. So they're willing, let me just put it this way, they are willing to sacrifice the planet, the farmers, the people who rely on water like me. I don't know if you live here in, in New Mexico, you know, water is the lifeblood here. You know, even if you're just uh, living in an apartment in, I don't know, Cuesta or something. I mean, it's, it's you know, without water, you're gonna have fires, you're gonna be, uh, you're gonna have to eventually leave. Ah, mm, you'll, there, now you've said something. You'll have to eventually leave. Are we starting to uh, smell a big fat commie rat here? <laughs> you are going to have to actually leave. Um, what if the plan is to have everyone leave? in order to cordon off certain parts of the United States and, and move people into uh, official cities. And because of this whole agenda of climate change, keep them off public parks, shut down public parks, put them a fence around them, call humans the pollutants of the universe. Now we're being called pollutants, according to some, that um, according to this uh, uh, David Keith guy, we are, um, you know, the Harvard researcher, we are, um, we have something to do with uh, meteors. 
bringing meteors in. That our effect on the atmosphere, humans that is, and the carbon emissions are bringing meteors into the atmosphere. In other words, we're causing the potential catastrophe and an extinction level event. Oh my gosh, sound the alarms. These humans, and what's the bigger picture? What's the bigger story? The bigger story is that the humans can't be trusted out there and we need to move them away from public lands. And there's too many anyway. We need to encourage them uh, via Agenda 21 and other things to, you know, look, before I go further, because I said I mentioned, you know, you mentioned a hot button issue like gay or mentioned something like uh, climate change or you mentioned uh, what's the uh, abortion or whatever. And immediately it gets into a political fight. To me, and let me just be very clear about this. I don't believe the government should be involved in defining what marriage is uh, in terms of they shouldn't be involved in the definition. Or I don't want them involved in it at all other you know but at the same time we have laws and we have you know we have look to me what it looks like is wherever you fall on the side of the issue it's never going to let me just say a couple things and then and my digression here it's never going to be solved the people on the quote left versus the the christians on the quote right will be in a civil war and already are in a soft civil war right now that's vicious and eventually it's going to wind up in, in one side or the other being incarcerated. And that's where this is heading over, yes, over something like the gay issue. That's right. It's going to lead to bloodshed. It's going to lead to incarceration. The libertarians believe the government shouldn't be involved in social issues. I mean, in other words, if, if I decide to get married, you know, that's between me, God, and my wife, you know. If I want to marry my car and I want to do something really, I, oh gosh, I got to find that Queen song. One time where their drummer sung, because it's Freddie Mercury who could sing against that. It was a monster. And then, uh, but he did a great job. It was called I'm in Love with My Car, 1973. Well, anyway, never mind. Ancient history. But I thought it was funny that someone was singing about being in love with their car. Yeah, wanting to perhaps marry the car. So we have a mockery of the Bible, basically. And now there's people on Twitter uh, issuing death threats against any Christians and then stomping on the Bible on Easter and stomping on figures of Jesus and urinating on him and defecating on Jesus and all that because Jesus is not for gay marriage. So anyone that is, a, if you go at all of our civilization based on marriage, look, a, a lot of people, marriage doesn't contain people. They have gay sex, straight sex, they're straight married, they have gay partners. This is all, you, you know, this is all the, the man dealing with his urges and trying to get, you know, control over. We know that if you just give in to everything, if you want to just do drugs and sex, you'll dissipate. The more partners you have, the more you spiritually dissipate. We know that. So, we're, we're, you know, that's... Something we, we, we know inherently that, uh, that the Bible, for what, whatever you want to call it, corny or anything else, it, it has instructions for how not to dissipate and how to have a better life, but some of it requires sacrifice. One of the things that we're asked to sacrifice are things like jealousy, envy, um, murder, um, hatred of uh, you know, our, our neighbors, no matter what their beliefs or whatever. Uh, and, you know, that's a, to me, that's a lot of good things. There is, uh, and I don't want to get caught up in this issue and get away from what I'm talking about, but, you know, the, 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 the reason it's important to, to talk about the issues uh, bef- of the culture war that are before us, because they're directly connected to global warming, i.e. the climate change agenda, and Agenda 21 and all of it. So gays are being used as a battering ram for something else. That's my point. I don't, I have, God, I'm just not, um, whether it's right or wrong or what people decide to do, it's not my business. But the redefinition of something as part of the cultural war to redefine the civilization is a ruse because the whole point is to make it a mockery and collapse it and build another one, a new world order, which is Luciferian, a new world order um, would be anything anti-God, 
you know, that's the whole point. This is a war on God. The chemtrails are a war on God. The issues before the Supreme Court, which is, a, I never thought we would get to the point where it'd be this silly, but th that's a war on God, okay? Uh, there's now persecution of Christians in the United States, which I predicted. You remember, I predicted that in 2002 and three that that would happen, eventually leading to rounding them up as terrorists when they've done nothing wrong. They are being rounded up for having Bible studies in their dorms or in their, you know, quietly and privately on their neighborhood streets. They're being shut down. Prayer is being shut down. People are praying and holding hands and praying in a public place. Invariably, someone will take their iPhone or one of the, or their device and they'll call and report it to the police. You're being demonized if you believe in Jesus as stupid. You're being marginalized as someone that's uh, now mentally ill. I told you about the rise of the psychiatrists. It's all related to the military industrial complex, the Luciferian agenda, the new world order, which would be an order without light, without God. And everything that would be sanctioned would be that which is against God. And anything that would be with God would be illegal. It would be turned completely backwards. And with this smiling face con artist of Obama, who's the biggest global um, chemtrail sprayer we've seen, he's even worse than Bush. And Bush was bad. Um, during the Bush administration, we were sprayed constantly, being bombarded from the air from these people. And, uh, you know, it's all tied together. Agenda 21. Uh, pushing the gay agenda, another, another aspect of that, the gay agenda is really about depopulation. And, um, you know, they really do want to depopulate the planet, so they'll use whatever device. So th the wedge issue of, of gay marriage is being used for other purposes. The wedge issue of um, abortion is another thing. It has to do with population control, absolutely. Both of those are related in that way. A woman's right to choose is a ruse. It's uh, Obama has voted for the murder of the baby, even if the baby survives the abortion attempt or the attempt to take its life. If it survives on a table, Obama believes it should be killed. And he's, he votes president and not accounted for most of the time before he became you know, president. But on this issue, he stands right up and goes, yes, late-term abortion. He's been a big fighter for the late, the later the, for a Satanist, it's the later the term, the better, because then you get a pop off the sacrifice. That was the whole thing about babies to Molech in the Bible in ancient times. They would sacrifice the, they would have orgies. I mean, uh, let's, let's face it, when, the, uh, is, when Israel went, apostate when when and even when christians went apostate they would immediately go all the way into the pagan orgies which by the way were all bisexual and it was omnisexual and also included bestiality and every other kind of thing you can think of there were lots of babies born those babies born from those rituals were sacrificed because they believed that there would be power and wealth that would come to the people and this has been an ongoing Realm of darkness from the beginning of time. There's the pagan way, which there's a lot of people that paint it as, you know, it's really the gods and it's so peaceful and it's just like the Wiccan witches and they're trying to help the earth. And it's, it's got, that all might seem well and good and, and to some people. But the bottom line is that's all, they're all being used because the real root of it, it comes from Satan. It, the root of it comes from earth worship or earth dwellers. Anyway, it's a complete um, retardation of the mind against the spirit, ultimately. So you worship the created things, the stars, the moon, the sun, you know, what the Mayans did. And you know how that wound up. So you worship all that. And you have to, and the other thing about the pyramid and the people of the pyramid and the people of the obelisk, we have the big one, the biggest ones in the world is in Washington, D.C., is there must be blood sacrifice. Sorry, I keep moving this. It makes a noise. Oh, it's popping my subwoofer. So you, uh, you wind up um, unwittingly, if, if there isn't vigilance, spiritual vigilance, you serve the beast, that is the pyramid. The people of the pyramid were global. There was a new world order at one point. It was destroyed, remember? And um, these, these beings, these fallen angels, were worshipped as gods. In fact, the, the definition of them are gods because they're, you know, they, they don't die and they're, they're not, um, you know, limited as we are. 
And so they were worshipped as gods, and then, you know, people tried to become as the gods. In other words, they provided a way for people to become eternal in their own terms. Nimrod was a good example in the Bible, and then later, uh, the last king of the Mayans, and I now escape his name, but he was dedicated to Quetzalcoatl, the serpent god, <laughs> the serpent god. And all of this is what, you know, again, there were, there were people that were talking about the a pyramid of Giza as being the um, fulfillment of Isaiah 19:19, which was about the, this uh, this uh, uh, altar in the desert. It's not an altar. It's not anything to do with God. The pyramid has got everything to do with the geoengineering, with re-terraforming the planet, with d disrupting the human genome and the plant genome, with destroying that which is here to remake it in the laboratory. Ultimately, it's going to give rise to the robots and the machines. The robots and the machines will kill anything and everything that's still left human, still left biological, or still left with the imprint of God. Again, I told you, across the board, on every issue, whether it's the Supreme Court, gay marriage, abortion, this, that, or the other, it's all used. No matter what the participants think, you know, they're, they're going to be de denying it. They're just going to say, well, you're just a, a bigot that doesn't want... Uh, you know, equality for all people. And then it's like, it's got nothing to do with that. And I am not a bigot. I mean, I mean, I'm put it this way. I'm bigoted when I want, don't want to deal with certain people, but, um, bigot meaning, uh, I don't like people because they, well, I'll, I'll put it this way. I'm probably bigoted against Luciferians. Okay. I'll, I'll admit that bias when I know people are killing children and, uh, using war as a sacrifice or abortion or thing, you know, and they're, and they're using witchcraft and things to get power from all that. Uh, that gets my ire folks. Okay. I'm a bigot. I'm bigoted. I, I don't believe that kind of practice should be allowed anywhere because it leads to death of all of us. All of the things that we just talked about in a very short period of time here are interrelated. Nothing is actually not interrelated. Everything is related toward a certain pattern that uh, the Bible warned about. Let's see if I can get my Bible going before I see if it will actually open up. <laughs> and this is what I opened to. And I saw when the lamb opened one of the seals and I heard as it were the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, come and see. And I saw and behold a white horse and he that sat on him had a bow and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there was another horse that went out that was red. And power was given him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, that they should all kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. And when he opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And behold, on a low black horse... And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand, saying, and I heard a voice from the midst of the four beasts say, a measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny, and see, how, and see thou not hurt the oil and the wine. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the fourth beast come, say, come and see, and I looked, and behold, a pale horse. And the name that sat on him was Death, and hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with the beasts of the earth. I don't need to go any further. I think I rest my case on that. I believe that's what we're seeing. And then, and when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar of souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for their testimony, which they held. Of course, that makes God angry. And they cried with, because they're innocent. It's why. Because they have not sown to the, they have been either delivered from the grip of satanic slavery and, and uh, the, 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 uh, the, the inherent bloodletting and murder that goes along with that. They've been set free and they're walking on the narrow path of the Lord and for that they're killed. Really fair. That, in other words, your nice uh, news media, you, Andrea Mitchell has uh, cut their heads off. <laughs> and they, at how long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? So people are crying out. The blood cries out from the ground. All the innocents that were killed from basically Abel on are crying out to the Lord. How long are you going to let these nasty people, the military industrial complex, and, you know, have always been in charge, uh, just 
torture everyone and hurt everything and destroy everything. How long? Because remember, they're destroying the planet, the genome. You're not, it's not just making it personal and human and how evil that is. It's across the board. All in the name of progress, science, and all in the name of goodness. And they all believe that they're helping see the bridge on the River Kwai, like I told you yesterday. And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest for a little while until their fellow servants also and their brethren, that they should be killed as they were, should be fulfilled. When the rest of them are killed, then I'm, and that's the formula for God. He's not going to move on it. Um, in terms of putting the final end smack down. And this, of course, relates to, this goes straight to uh, Revelation 18. In other words, you, you're seeing it from one angle here with the seals opening. We go ahead. We don't go ahead time-wise to Revelation 18. We're just showing the result of this. Okay. And uh, then the sixth seal, and we might as well just get to this since now it's turning into a rima. I had no idea. And I beheld when he had opened up the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell to the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken by a mighty wind. And the heaven departed uh, as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man hid themselves in the dens of the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the faith of him, the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb for the great day of his wrath has come and who shall be able to stand? Cut to uh, 18. And then the result of the prayer of the fifth seal. The fifth seal is basically a prayer. Lord, how long are you going to, how thousands of years of pain and suffering at the hands of others who cause pain and suffering to boost themselves in power and to lord it over everyone in their, in, from their thrones. You know, the military industrial complex being one, religion being another. I just talked to someone today who tried to go to an Easter service. She gave me a little bit of a testimony of how that day went. At, some, at one point during the service, because, I mean, it was just like traditional. Yeah, we go to Easter service. Well, not when the, when the Lord takes you, when he transforms you into one of his. You don't get along in the churches. Anyway, about halfway through, and I hope she doesn't mind my saying this story. I, I mean no harm by it, but just... You know, will remain anonymous, of course. But you know, at some point during the service, she had to flee. She just had to get out of there. And she ran out, out, out of the service. Now, maybe didn't run, but she quickly left and went into the lobby where she said there were more mind control slaves. She kind of just, in a daze, totally hypnotized, just kind of there in, in, a, in, a, in a state of complete control. That's right. The, welcome to the drones. of And they were all staring at her like she had done something wrong by leaving that service. Well, what were they doing out in the hall? They're just monitors. They don't have to go to the service. But if you leave, ooh, you're evil. So I don't know how it's going to shake out because you've got, uh, I, mean, I know one thing, that, that this Babylon church that I'm speaking of now, this was a Protestant church, I believe, uh, will be destroyed, guaranteed as Babylon. Um, what about the Catholic church, the church of Peter? Well, you know, there's a, Good debate about that. Is that really the church of Peter? I know that he headed up the church of Jer Jerusalem and then James came after him. James was not a co-leader, but James came after Peter because Jesus appointed Peter as the head of the church. And they had an organized church. So after Jesus, there was a church. And Peter, the great scholar, not <laughs> the fisherman, the, the, the worker, the common man. Peter, who rose Tabith from the dead after being filled with the Holy Spirit. Peter, who prophesied, uh, you know, death on others. Peter, who walked by and people would get healed. Peter, who was given all these powers by Jesus, was the, the head. He had supernatural signs and wonders, and he was the head of the church in Jerusalem. And then eventually he left. And there was a kind of a rift with Paul. The, the church kind of split at that point. 
you know, people say Paul was really the usurper. No, he, he wasn't the usurper. Paul continued on what Peter was teaching and, and what Jesus was teaching. And Paul continued on to evangelize as the evangel to the Gentiles, which means to the nations. And he fulfilled his function perfectly. And Peter fulfilled his function perfectly. Does God have a, now you're going to think I'm a Catholic here, and, and woe to me from when uh, you conspiracy theorists get a hold of me, but is it possible that any part of the church could be reformed? The, the only word I have is no. But Jesus said that upon this rock, Peter, who Peter was named Simon, Simon Barjona, and Jesus renamed him the rock because he was a strong man too. He's the rock and rely on you. You're like the rock. Okay. So Peter's, uh, Petra, uh, Petro, Petra rock. So Peter was named the rock and, um, you know, like the rock, like, like the wrestler, <laughs> like big, strong guy, you know, you fish and all that. And you, you deal with boats and you're hoisting up, uh, you know, sails and, and, and working the uh, anchors and working the, the uh, nets and all that stuff, you're going to be really strong, really fit. So Peter, the strong, um, the rock, was the head of the church in Jerusalem. And the question becomes, uh, you know, whether or not the book of Jude that comes uh, just before the book of Revelation is there to say that, yes, but that's, but the Catholic church is not the church of Peter. And now I'm in trouble with the Catholics for saying that. Um, Clearly, throughout the ages, uh, you know, when Jesus says to the churches of Asia, and he says, you know, I've got something against you, but I'm going to deal with you individually. In other words, that you've done some good work, but you've also got this going on. It's a mixed bag. And I think in the church situation, yes, it's a mixed bag. But he'll deal with everyone in that Babylonian church system, which is where Satan is at the head of it. He'll, because it's a conforming mechanism for society. In other words, you go there and they will make you into a good little citizen. And, um, you know, you'll be completely evil, but you'll be called good. And you'll have to forget about things you've seen and, and you, you know, see no evil, hear no evil, and speak no evil. For the rest of your life, you have to keep your mouth shut or you're not going to get any pudding. So, because people will do anything for pudding, inclu including... <laughs> sell out everything that they know to be good just because they want the pudding. Um, that, that, that's the, the human condition, right? You know, and, and, and I'm not blaming anyone for that. I'm just saying that, you know, that's our burden that we share. Um, God says he's going to deal with that. And he says this, look. Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, and you receive not her plagues, for her sins have reached to, he to heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. The queen of Babylon, the queen, that's who all, that's who, you know, this is the queen that everyone bows down to, who is conformed to the world. And um, she's the whore of Babylon. She runs things. She's the Jezebel spirit. She's, uh, you know, the, the, the problem. And God says he will reward. It. So when he finally does go to vengeance, he says, look, people, leave. That means institutions that means well what are institutions the devil has power over all institutions what are the institutions come out of her because and don't be partaker of her sin in other words you can't sleep with her or fornicate with her in any way because fornicating with her is the ritual that they want so look whatever your sexual proclivities are you know, and, and, and it's really none of my business, but just don't do it with her. <laughs> okay. Um, because, you know, now that's no longer sin. Now that's spiritual soul position legally. It's a legal framework. It's a legal case that humanity is, that it's a legal case. It doesn't matter what your intentions were or that you were trying to do good from within the system or whatever. You need to come out. And Jesus works with his flocks to bring them out. And it's, they've got one here, one there. And, you know, it's, it's happening right as we speak. Uh, God hath remembered her iniquities and she reward her even as she rewarded you and double under double according to her works in the cup with she, which she has filled with to her in the cup, which she hath filled, filled to her double language. Hmm? 
how much she has glorified herself to live deliciously, how much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen, and I am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. That arrogance, have you seen it out there? I'm, I saw it with, well, I won't go into that. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire, for the strong is the Lord who judges her. And I've often wondered, you know, and all the kings of the earth who have committed fornication live deliciously with her. They don't say some kings, mean leaders of industries, corporations, and countries and whatnot. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication live deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her. They're going to be upset. When the system, if God removes the system, everyone that had been kind of on the pyramid holding on for dear life, that pyramid's going to be gone and they're all going to collapse. This is what they fear the most, that God really has power. Right now they're mocking him, but then there's a cynical aspect to that. If you mock God and get people to mock him, maybe God will strike back getting your job done for you, i.e. depopulation. Come on, God. Hey, just, you know, let's, let's defecate on the Bible and stuff and make it artwork and <laughs> get God to do something. Come on, God, do my work for me. The devil would love to get him to do that. And okay, so you say we're talking duality here. God and the devil. No, actually, there's, it's monality. There is no duality. There's no such thing as duality. There are shades of things. There's light versus dark. You know, there's, there's, um, um, black, there's a, a good and evil. There's two charges for the battery, you know, positive and negative. And those are intertwined, and that's actually the, the collision of opposites that God is controlling, not on one side or the other, but, I mean, creating this whole thing that he's creating. Um, God is pure love, pure light, and what's being created is pure love and pure light, Though it doesn't look like it from our perspective, it shows our fallen perspective. And, and, and in, a, in a sense, you're not going to have the end result of Zion, of the new Jerusalem, without going through this. It's not possible for whatever reason. And we can object to it all we want and how unfair it is and how awful it is that good people are being hurt every day while it seems like bad people are going free. And I just have news for you on that front. The bad people, like the military-industrial complex, who's destroying the earth? in the name of saving whatever, and whatever, however they justify it. They're destroying the earth. The goal of science is to um, destroy what God made and make and remake it in our wonderful image as humans. Uh, the idea is to live forever in this paradigm when there's infinite others. In other words, to be tethered into this prison forever and ever and ever and ever. That's what they're working on right now? Sounds to me like they're trying to keep my soul in a box. How about you? I don't want that. I, their technology, if that's what they're after, and, you know, there is an advanced technology to take people's souls. And I saw it on the moon. I went to the moon in a vision. I saw a crystal city there. And to the right of it, you know, and then I was in the, in the crystal building where they, there was this council and they were deciding, uh, there was almost like being on Mount Olympus, you know, and all these guys were in there in white robes and stuff and they were sitting around this like long table, but it was another dimension, so it's hard to understand, you know, and they were deciding what was going to happen to the earth. And meanwhile, souls that died are coming into this like machine thing that was next to this city to the, it almost looked like, is that a, a crematorium for the soul? Yeah, people would go into this tunnel of white light and see all their relatives and elders and, oh, hi, oh, my, my dog, and come into the light with us. And they couldn't wait to just run down the tunnel of light. And they got scalped. And uh, the people running it were, the, were what you would call the gray aliens. I know that sounds really bizarre, but you want to hear something more bizarre? A few years after I had uh, experienced that, I believe that was in... Uh, about 1992, if it was, it was 1992, so you'll have to check me on dates, those of you who are archivalists, but John Lear, the famous UFO guy that was on Art Bell, he, uh, he said the same thing, I, I, and I heard it a few years later, but he said the exact same thing, in a matter of fact way, like, you know, where I, I don't know if anyone knew, I mean, that's such a bizarre story, can you really make something like that up? 
But he said it, that there was a soul scalping machine on the moon. So when you die, you go into this tunnel of light and it's run by the gray aliens who take your soul identically to what I, what I had. It's not just talked about, but what I had experienced through a, a vision. I wasn't free then in 1992. It seemed like, you know, they were teaching me this angel language. I was writing down hieroglyphics and I started doing artworks and paintings involving the pyramids. And, and then I did one and I destroyed all this art because it, it disturbed me so much. But I had one where there were pyramids in space, you know, like, a, like if you were to see a 3D thing of a pyramid rotating in space, you know, for like a science thing or whatever, to, to, you know, like a graphic to show you what the pyramid was, how they can rotate it in space. And um, the, the pyramid was then, te- the, then there were these floating light beings tethered at the solar plexus, um, to the pyramids, like they were connected to them, like they got their life or sustenance from the pyramid, and they were like beings of light. And then underneath that, there was writing that I did, which involved like backwards question marks, threes, three backwards, a uh, two type of thing with a dot under it, a two thing with a dot over it. Um, kind of derivations of an exclamation point, but the, there was a dot on either side rather than on top. You know, really weird stuff like that and then different shapes and things. And um, interestingly enough, later on, I had uh, seen some of these um, hieroglyphics, if you will, some of these images, some of these uh, numerations or whatever, some of these uh, figures on some of the alien stuff. Uh, around the internet, you know, like I've seen it that backwards three and I think the three had a dot where the three where the middle part is on the inside of it. If you do it backwards, it would be to the right, right in the middle of the three. And um, I just thought, that, you know, that's fascinating. But I mean, I'm I don't want to be in this. And then eventually that led to one of these, you know, a, a revelation about Satanism that I'd forgotten. Cause at that time I thought I was crazy and it was all a big mistake. And, um, it's kind of a long story, but basically I, uh, then had a, a memory triggered of a satanic ritual. I was in a sex ritual with adults when I was, I must've been four or something. And I know this is horrifying. I, and I believe I got myself kicked out of there and then or five. And then when I went to day camp, Later on, um, then there was this kind of older kid in, in the pool, at this day camp that tried to drown me. Then I realized later that it had to do with the fact that I had not been a good boy in the ritual or whatever it was. But, and I confronted the people involved and they went hysterical, kind of conform. And that information about that came from uh, a spaceship and an alien being in in the room that tried they tried to abduct me and somehow I held on I didn't you know it was really weird it was scary I was so scared that I couldn't even get up out of the I couldn't go get a glass of water I couldn't do anything and um, the ships were around at that time uh, then I realized that they were the run, ones who ran the rituals who ran the uh, pedophilia and the uh, those rituals that that they that these were the gods of the people in question who were doing the rituals, they were praying to these as gods and they were orchestrating the whole thing with the children. And, um, and then I'd heard the same thing later in, um, when I went to the Pickwick, uh, in Burbank, the Pickwick, they have, uh, it's a bowling and ice skating place. And, but they also have areas for weddings and they have conferences there. So they have the MUFON conference. Uh, and a person that had been deprogrammed from MK Ultra, some kind of MK Ultra program or something, where she was helping the government abduct children, but she was riding on the alien spacecraft, abducting children for whatever purposes, while there were like government helicopters around observing the event. So there's a collusion between the military industrial complex and these aliens. And she was explaining about how the whole purpose was. Then she segues from that into being in, in a church, and I believe it was a Catholic church, and in the basement they had it lined up with a pentagram and some child sacrifice or something. Anyway, she was giving her testimony, and her deprogrammer was there, who I didn't trust very much, and she was giving this testimony about, and what was it? It was all about these children. 
and either having sex with them or killing them or doing something. But it was all about getting that. And, and I just, you know, hearing that after um, my memory experience came due, because it wasn't just people in a room. It was very scientific. You know, my memory was basically, the, you know, the, the certain parents in a room uh, observing this ritual of sex between children and adults the, the, who are there to program somehow the kids to get them in to this situation. And that all had to do with the society that they were coming from. In other words, that's the deep, dark secret of, you know, the gentry society or whatever, or the entry point. And um, the integration of children into it, because the sex had nothing to do with it. It had to do with the initiation process into that community. And uh, to this day, I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, it's not that there was abuse like some child abuse scenario. It was orchestrated, organized, and ancient, generational. And, and that was the thing. And that's what, that's basically that, that situation. And then later as adults, the same people coming around trying to get you to conform to the Satanist, the, the Luciferian, to Satan, to the pyramid, to, to the same thing that I'm talking about when I was like four or five. Um, they were trying to get you to become a part of it. And the consequence was, well, they'll kill you if you talk bad against it or if you, and it's like, okay. So I, I yeah. And then tying all that together into a worldview then opening the Bible and seeing how the Bible describes the exact same thing. That this ancient bondage is what Jesus is all about, liberating us from that. But even more than that, overcoming death, going to eternity, escaping the legal um, condemnation that we're living under, whether we deserve it or not. We're living under it. We got to do something about it. And he's there to do something about it. And he had overcome the system and overcome death and, over, and beat the devil. It was it's basically over at the cross. So, no, not afraid of it. I'm just, I'm just looking at it like this. The whole thing that I've described, which is terrible and involves high-level politicians, kings, queens, you know, the, the gentry of society, the high elites of society, and it's governed by witchcraft and witches and uh, monitored and, 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 and kept secret uh, and uh, and once that gets into a society and takes over, because it spreads from person to person, the goal is to get as many into it as possible. No, you can't be only. Had I been different, I suppose I would have been like people that I was there with. That, that, you know, we're friends in school. I, you know, they they they're running the world now. <laughs> so what does that tell you? Yeah, if you want to get ahead. What do you, you know, you got to sacrifice your children if you want them to get ahead, you know, and, and a lot of times in these families, one of the kids dies and then the other one goes on to become some, you know, high powered lawyer or some kind of, you know, politician or whatever it is, you know, and uh, they start off at, in their um, toddling years because that's the only way, you know, if you want to start a kid off on violin, it's five, right? You want another, you know, uh, Mozart? You better have him start playing piano when he's like five years old, right? So it's the same theory because people that get into it in high school, they're always going to be the servants. But they'll, don't worry, they'll be servants because like I said, if there's any freebies, even crumbs, they'll sell out and, and they'll defend it. And then so they'll always say, this is better than, than, than the way we had. When, Hello, Joe Walsh, the Rocky Mountain Way. I just saw Joe Walsh. Uh, well, that was a good, good song about what I'm talking about. That's exactly it. And he got to be Joe Walsh because obviously he started off a young age. Yeah. But it's not about sex or death. You know, it's about entry into another world that's not this one. And as in the Dave Matthews band, he said that it's so much better on the other side. And then people say, well, try it. You'll like it. But I know that once you're over there, you ain't coming back. So I just saw Joe Walsh performing at Ringo Starr's birthday party. 
And Ringo looked terrific. I mean, he looked like he was 16 years old. I, I don't even know what they've done to him, but he had he must weigh 110 pounds or something. But it wasn't bad looking in his hair and his skin. And then he was playing drums. He was like, gosh, is, is he getting that kind of rejuvenation DNA therapy or something? But then, you know, and so they bring out the old folks, you know, the Todd Rundgrens and the guy from Toto and various other people that were playing in, the, in their band. And, you know, they were very tight and, you know, professional and good. But, uh, you know, my only thing that I feel is sad is that they have to keep playing these old songs. But anyway, so out comes Joe Walsh. And naturally, he's going to do Rocky Mountain Way. And they all, and they're playing and he's killing it and doing a great job with slide guitar and everything. But then he goes, yeah, the Rocky Mountain Way is better than the way we had as a lyric. And he goes... Almost like his face contorts and he almost gets really angry and goes, Yeah, it's a lot better. It's like, okay, Joe. All right. It's a lot better. It's a lot better. And so, um, no, I doubt that a guy like Joe is going to want to look at all this other stuff. You know, when you've seen the children killed. And you've seen the amount of bloodletting that goes on from being uh, on the Rocky Mountain Way. I know he just thinks it's about getting his rocks off. I mean, I'm I'm sure that's all, you know. But why would they pay you for that? (laughs) It seems to me. Well, anyway, I can't. I'm, you know, I'm not going to mock the devil right now. I'm just going to say, oh, no, they'll say it's not the devil. And so, well, then what is it, man? What is it where there's this whole system involved? What is it? It's not just sex, drugs, and rock and roll, uh, which is what they think. It's entry into another dimension that is not this one, that me, then the door is shut. It's an entry into um, you know, a lot of cover-ups, a lot of death, and there's so many murders in Hollywood and in the music business. There's so many of these ODs or murders and sacrifices where one guy wants to get ahead, so he sacrifices the other guy, hoping it's because he's famous or whatever, a Kurt Cobain type, hoping to get up a, up a leg themselves. A whole documentary was done on that, blaming uh, Courtney Love for Kurt Cobain. And I'm like, yeah, if you only knew what I knew, you'd know you'd know really where to look on that. But I mean, you know, the thing is, is Courtney Love's never going to get in trouble because it's the system. It's Babylon. Not only is it sanctioned, if you don't play the game, which is the game of death, by the way, not, not pleasure, it's the game of death, the game of torture, the game of mental torture, the game of harm, the game of the military industrial complex, the pentagram, I mean, Pentagon, you know, terraforming the earth and then when there's a catastrophe blaming the people it's the same thing my mother used to laugh at me and she'd say you know you're such a fool you know had you just gotten going you know like so and so is working and he's working for Don Rumsfeld right now in the White House and look look what you could have been doing (laughs) Yeah, but there was something that, something in childhood that really, you know, there's something in my spirit that just uh, considers you, mommy dearest, disgusting for, you know, but now I forgive. But I mean, it's, um, doesn't put you in a good light. It doesn't put anyone that I've known that's been there in a good light at all. I tend to focus on the good memory of my mother, you know, the good thing, because she was, she did her best, but, you know, the thing that kind of tainted it was her, the multiple personalities that were created from uh, this reality that I'm talking about. And some of those personalities were pretty nasty, and another one was mom, and was, you know, and that's the one I focus on now, because I did get love, and I gave love. But this other stuff just ruined her life. You know, half the time she didn't know who she was. And, you know, I know I don't want to speak ill of the dead. And I'm not going to, you know, as she used to laugh about, she'd say, you don't know anything. When I'd run down a litany of abuses and things that were just terrible, it was like that was nothing compared to what I should have known. And and it's like, well, you know what? I don't want to know. But if that's the bottom line with it, 
then I'm, I really feel sorry for a lot of these people because look at the burden they're carrying. Look how much evil they've had to do to keep this facade going. You know, I mean, not just bearing false witness and ruining people's lives and, and murderers and things, you know, you know, that they're labeled as accidents and whatnot. And, uh, you know, all this fix-it stuff, you know, like in government, if there's somebody that knows something about Obama or Clinton or Bush or anything, has the power to do anything with the amount of power the presidency has, they're just not going to be there. I mean, that's the system. That, that's, this is all part of the same. So naturally, the person in the world would say, you've got to conform to that because... Uh, you know, you don't want to be left on the side of the road, some dumb bum. So biting the apple means becoming a murderer. And that's, that's been my whole objection. I don't want to murder people. Um, I don't want to use uh, criminal tactics and street smarts to trap people and to get them to do what I want. You know, I don't want to arrange for a, a sacrifice of somebody so we can all boost ourselves. I don't want to sacrifice my children in order to have a better time myself. I don't want to be selfish. I don't want to be narcissist. I don't want to be a rock star. You know, I don't want it to be all about me like with the president. The, the first guy that I've ever seen in office who really did put on the air of you serve me, I don't serve you uh, more than anybody else I've seen. And he's a classic Luciferian. I don't want to be like that. I don't want to join a club where I have to have an oath, which is always an oath to the devil, no matter how many, who you give it to or how nice it seems, I including church memberships, masonry, secret societies, um, any kind of cult. You know, Bohemian Grove, same thing. And just look up who goes there. The, you know, you've got, the strong, you've got both Republicans and Democrats going there. And you have to be a member of the Bohemian Club, which you can't be a member of unless you're a real mover and shaker on the planet. But one thing they all have in common, they all have the same religion. I think Alex Jones mentioned something about that and did a video of their little ritual and but, you know, that's all going to be theater. That's all going to be comical compared to the real thing. Wars, rumors of wars, all these things. So there's a lot of problems, okay. But every single problem, including the geoengineering, the destruction of, the, uh, of now 60% of the country in drought, that's engineered. So they've used something that could have made it rain and given farmers a break and help people. Instead, they've used it as a war on the people. And that's why the people wonder in New Mexico why we have no more pinyon trees, why the, the junipers are now dying, which is, they're very hardy trees. It's because they're creating a desert here. And pretty soon, you know, I'm seeing more and more sand and less and less soil. They're causing, they're destroying animals. They're destroying people. At the same time, they're calling for gay marriage and abortion rights of a woman's right to choose. At the same time, uh, everyone is in agreement. This is a lovely thing to do to have marriage equality and then income equality. And then, you know, eventually, you know, of course, uh, we can't leave out the polygamists or all the rest of it. But it's got nothing to do with the poly polygamists and the... Um, why should someone who's gay have a problem being compared to a polygamist? I can't imagine that. At all, in any way, shape, or form. You know, it's not going to be the first thing through the gate. I predict they will get it through. And uh, I predict that it's just a matter of time before, you know, again, everything goes down with entropy. So we're, this civilization is collapsing and will be gone. Is this the last one? I just know you have to have a relationship with the Lord because as far as I'm concerned, I'm in the last day, which is non-time with him. And that's the only place I have peace in non-time with him. And I'm just going to go with him. But everything I've said here today is pretty much true. And those that get mad cannot accept the truth that they're being used as a tool. You know? Um, nobody, not gay, not straight, not left, not right, not polygamous, not anybody has freedom right now. We're, so there is no freedom or equality of anything. 
The government cannot make everyone equal unless they, they put us all in a prison camp and say, see, you're all equal. It's absurd, this whole thing, but yet they're, they're, they're playing for keeps. So my suggestion is that we stop fighting each other on this stupid stuff and come together to actually address the real issue, the real thing. But since I predict that that will never happen, um, because the real thing is hidden, and supernaturally so. So it's hidden and veiled so that people can't see it, so that we can never come together on the issue. So we're just going to kill each other. And, of course, qui bono. When we kill each other, you know, the oligarchs win. We are at war with each other, the oligarchs win. Um, they pit us against each other, the oligarchs win. Greatest divider in the, so far since Stalin and all these different guys is, you know, Obama. Will anyone stop him? Uh, well, it looks like the Republicans have all bowed down and they are uh, bent over and uh, they're, they're going to town. They've sold you out because they, they can't beat the devil and they think he's the devil. So that's, there's a lot of Christians that believe he's the devil and he's the man of sin, the man of perdition. He's it. The Lord's given me another glimpse of time and space that's not exactly like what people expect to see. That the mystery is far greater, even though I agree with the, the fundamental righting of the wrongs in the world and you know, establishing the kingdom of God everywhere and, and so that all people can see it, all beings understand that the Lord is the Lord. We can talk later about why he would allow all this to happen. But it's, you know, I go beyond that. He created everything to happen. And um, we just can't deal with the fact that he would create everything to happen in things that we consider very evil, that he would have a hand in creating. But you know what? It's... um we're not seeing it accurately. That's, a, that's another part of the problem. We can't see the whole picture here. Or, uh, you know, we have to have faith that the Lord is good. Faith that the Lord is, that the, the forces of creation, that, that he's with us. Faith that he deals with us individually. Faith that he guides it through. Because, look, I can't look at this head on every day without getting thoroughly bummed out and depressed. I don't know about you, but it's like, you know, I, I you know, like I say, I'd seen the, the whole sort of pedophile satanic system from the earliest age on was traumatized by it and, and, and irrevocably damaged by it in certain ways. You know, when you expose children to sex and different things, um, you know, and they, they're traumatized by it, it leaves a, an imprint on a person. And so naturally, I didn't want anything to do with Satan or anything like that. I mean, you know, in a good way, it traumatized me so that I didn't want anything to do with any of that ever again. Then I found out that, well, but everything has to do with that. It's like, no, but there's got to be another solution. The Lord. So I went running to the church only to find the devil staring back at me and laughing. I went running to the, to the philosophy department at the university only to have them laughing at the end of the day and saying, you know, we're really not here for truth. I, mean, I just really like having this job. I went running to the priest of the Catholic Church and I told him all about the problems I was having. And he told me I need to be more loving and forgiving and I need to, uh, and Jesus will show me the way and I'll have a good life, but I have to make amends. I said, but Lord, you know, but the Lord knows, and Father, I didn't do anything. You know, I didn't do anything wrong. I mean, what do you mean? What would you like me to do? And that didn't go so well. Because, see, in that act of asking a question, I was being rebellious. For him, it was just, just do it, get, just, just be different then. Or you're going to have a hard time, that's the bottom line but I can't accept the devil. Well, you're gonna have to. But see, I've seen the whole thing with the aliens and all, you know, the spaceships and the, uh, you know, the kids and the sacrifices. And all. I've seen the, the whole, the whole, uh, no, I haven't seen a lot. I'll, I'll come, some people laugh, they say I haven't seen anything. I don't wanna see anymore. It's the, you know, this idea of 
heinous murder and then laughing about it. They laugh and they drink blood and they laugh. <laughs> what a loser. <laughs> And then they put sane people in mental institutions, which is what they're getting ready to do again with, with the rise of the psychiatrist. In other words, if uh, you're any kind of a patriot or, you know, this whole thing is arcane and it's old. The new way is the way. And if you can't embrace that, you need a re-education. And if you're too old, then you just need to be euthanized. And that was the stuff of science fiction literature. Now people are eyeing it as as potentially possible. What other conclusion are they to make after looking around? So when you see the chemtrails, remember it's all part of this. Everything I've said today is the chemtrails. From the court cases to the, uh, the global warming initiatives and programs and all their uh, arguments and whatnot, to gun control, to the economy, to the churches, to the new pope, to the old pope, to this, that, and the other thing, to uh, religion, to religions, all of this. And the, the, the incredible need that they have for depopulation, the incredible need they have to really destroy. The only thing that's held them back has been the hand of God. You can take that to the bank, because this place would have been gone in 1962 had God's hand of protection over his children and his little ones. He has compassion. He's, you know, we have to kind of walk through this though. We have to get through, we have to do our part and get through this. We have to be here while we're here. We can't just be longing for an escape. You know, I mean, we long for the Lord to put an end to it. Yes, how long, oh Lord, how long? But we have to then not just sit there and do that. We're not here to deny being here, to be in denial. That they win if we do that. And that's a very miserable thing. There's a lot of great things in the earth, and I just want to look at what we got. We have a beautiful earth. We have beautiful children. We have beautiful uh, things to, to, to experience. Beautiful rivers and oceans. Plenty of abundance for everybody. You know, and then you look at what's here, and then you've got to ask yourself the question, Why? Why? The cynic will just shrug his shoulders and say, look, I just go along to get along. and I don't know why it's that way. Ask God. Well, that's not going to work. It's that way because of that guy. <laughs> you know, too many people just say, ah, well, you know, what are you going to do? You can't stop it. People are going to get killed. You can't stop it. People are going to go to war. You can't stop it. People are going to poison and make GMO foods. It's going to kill us all. You can't stop it. So just float and go downstream and just enjoy yourselves. Well, the, believe me, George Soros has got plenty of drugs for you in his programs of, of uh, carrying on the communist tradition to make you feel really, really nice about your slow euthanasia. <laughs> and with that, I'm going to get out of here. It's, uh, just want to do a straight thing. I don't know. You know, what are you going to do? I'm, I got friends on all sides of the equation. I really don't even consider myself a conservative anymore because it's got too much political baggage when you see so-called conservatives are... I don't know where I fit right now. I think I'm kind of like not fitting in either camp. I mean, I, you know, what I have that's conservative, it would be I'm a Bible believer. I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. I believe in the power of Jesus Christ to deliver us from evil. And uh, lead us not to temptation and to, to lay us down and to make a table for our Psalm 23 in the midst of our enemies, to protect us in the midst of all this evil and horror. But to me, it's um, definitely a horror movie that, that people are trying to make better of, but I mean, it's, it affects all of us. Ultimately, you know, we can't find a human cause. It's ultimately supernatural. But the human responsibility is to, you know, be aware enough to know that everything you do and everything I do or everything I don't do and everything you don't do is cataloged. And it's going to come up for a review at the end of our lives. 
Um, love all. We just can't hate anyone. I understand how people could fly the chemtrail planes around. I know I get angry and I wish I could throw them out of the plane, but bottom of the line at the end of the day, I would rather try to reason with a person like that and, and explain that they, even though they're putting food on the table for their family and they feel good about themselves for having a job flying around the uh, planes that are altering the weather that are destroying uh, farmers and crops and, and 60% of the country. Destroying 60% of the country with drought. I mean, that's an insane charge. To, you know, that's a charge, isn't it? Now, but I understand. You're building the bridge of the River Kwai. See? You're, you feel good about yourself because you've got a job. People who work for TSA, you now have a job. People that work for the Gestapo, you have a job. You feel good about yourself. You go home at night. Keep your head up when you're in town. You can go buy a beer. Okay, later. Blessings of Yeshua to each and all. Blessings of the Lord to each and all, each and all, abundantly and manifold, in manifold ways. The Lord, I just pray he comforts us all, especially after having to observe, just, just to do an overview of this and tie it all together so it's all one. It's, all this evil is just one, and all the good is just one. Within us, both conflict, and it's a terrible burden. But at the end of the day, it's going to be okay.
Hello, friends and YouTubers. This discussion by uh, Zeph wouldn't be complete unless I uh, read this little uh, article from a blog by uh, Brother Thomas. And it came out on Tuesday, April 2nd. And it was entitled, The Coordinated Takeover. When I do tune into the world, talk radio and such, from all corners, I am hearing the same shock and awe from various pundits at how suddenly and radically it seems our culture is changing. There seems to be a near universal opinion that fairly recently something has changed and most of them tend to tie it in time to the last depressing election. But this specific assault and transformation of traditional American culture, politics, etc. has actually been going on for a while. The big mistake which so many are making, which will allow the takeover to continue unabated, is to think that these radical liberal changes happening to our society are happening in naturally, as if we are sim <coughs> excuse me, as if we are simply evolving or progressing as a society. That new technical innovations, for instance, or social media, are simply speeding up what are inevitably well, inevitable changes within a modern progressive society. In fact, what is happening is the result of a very disciplined military strategy. It has been planned, directed, and deliberate. What we are seeing and experiencing is a mortal enemy of the U.S. and her allies, mostly those with a Christian religio-political heritage, who has systematically infiltrated all important positions of power within societal institutions over a period of decades. An enemy who has secretly, in coordination, been undermining, transforming, and taking control of said institutions and turn them all into transmission belts for an ongoing steady communist revolution. Now, we are just seeing the rotten fruits, the results of all these decades of successful subterfuge. As I have long said, it is over. We are but in the mopping up stages. Gay rights is the present perfect example of one of the battering rams the enemy is using to smash down the walls around our city. And it is a big one. But one of the main goals of the godless communist fascists is to destroy the family because the family is the primary competing governing authority over, in, over individuals. They want it to be the state and the state alone. No family, no God, no father or mother, no patriotic history are to inform the citizen as to what is right and wrong, but only the current agenda of the communist party. Through gay rights, they are finalizing their objective of changing our conception of fundamental rights as being civil rather than natural rights. Civil rights, as they are now being defined, are granted by the state. They are determined supposedly through consensus. But, of course, the danger with the founder, which the founders knew is that whatever rights the state grants, the state can also take away. Natural rights are those which are given by God which no man can take away and which are supposed to simply be guarded by the state as they continue to transform our notion of rights from natural to civil. We will continue to lose the ability to practice our natural rights, i.e. freedom of speech, self-protection, property rights, etc. Eventually, the enemy operators who have taken over the social institutions, media, and government will not be able to hide the devastating results of their tyr tyrannical policies Society will rapidly unwind and collapse and social unrest will increase. Of course, they are planning for this and want it to happen. Ultimately, they will have a militant police state that, with gulags and a wall around the outside to keep people from escaping. Although, since America really was the last best hope for freedom in the world and most of the other countries have already fallen, a wall might not be necessary as there will be nowhere to escape to. Since the God-hating communists ultimately have the first rebel as their progenitor, Lucifer, to whom, i.e., Saul Alinsky dedicated his Rules for Radicals book, then we know that the whole issue is actually a spiritual one above all. This is why in every communist takeover, religion, especially biblical Christianity, is vociferously uh, attacked. The Bible is at 180 degree odds against the secular religion of Lenin, Marx, Mao, Pol Pot. This is why, rather than jump on some political site 
first thing in the morning to continue agitation for the resisting the takeover, I instead jumped to prayer. I immediately, upon waking, direct my mind and heart to God, to Jesus, and begin to pray for the concerns of the day, and to praise Him and consider my friends and loved ones, and all those under persecution from the attacking hordes. Then, throughout the day, I continued to pray and study and keep my head in the Scripture, while in the world, because the enemy onslaught is so surrounding, so ubiquitous and constant now, that I can't imagine not taking every step at this time without the ever-present guidance of the Holy Spirit and com comforting presence of my living relationship with the true King, who will finally put down the godless demons and their imps and restore creation to its rightful God-worshipping place. Here are some presently more pertinent goals of the God-hating communist progressives as uh, delineated in, I believe is Skosin's The Naked Communist, clear back in the late 1950s when the book, I guess, came out. It is most almost darkly admirably how successful they have been from a militant or militarist uh, strategy point of view. Uh, please excuse my typos or grammar glitches. Ugh. I'm late for work and don't have time to proofread this. God bless you and thank you for your re uh, readership and spiritual support. Resent homosexuality, degeneracy, and promiscuity as normal, natural, and healthy. Discredit the family as an institution. Encourage promiscuity and easy divorce. Emphasize the need to raise children away from the negative influence of parents. Attribute prejudices, mental blocks, and retarding of children to, su to suppressive influence of uh, parents. Eliminate all laws governing obscenity by calling them censorship and violation of free speech and free press. Break down cultural standards of morality by promoting pornography and obsc obscenity in books, magazines, motion pictures, radio, and TV. Infiltrate the churches and replace revealed religion with social religion. Discredit the Bible, emphasize the need for intellectual ma maturity, which does not need a religious crutch. Get control of the schools. Use them as a transmission belt for social and current communist propaganda. Soften the curriculum. Get control of teachers, associations, put the party line in textbooks. Gain control of all student newspapers. Eliminate prayer for any phrase or religious expression in the schools on the ground that it violates the principle of separation of church and state. Discredit the American Constitution by calling it inadequate, old-fashioned, out of step with modern needs, a hindrance to the cooperation between nations on a worldwide basis. Discredit the American Founding Fathers. Present them as selfish aristocrats who had no concern for the common man. Belittle all forms of American culture and discourage the teaching of American history on the ground that it was only a minor part of the big picture. Give more emphasis to Russian history since the communists took over. Transfer some of the powers of arrest from the police to social agendas. <laughs> Sounds like uh, gang stalking to me. Treat all behavioral problems as psychiatric disorders which no one but psychiatrists can understand or treat. Hmm, yeah, okay. Another gang stalking tactic. And dominate the psychiatric profession and use mental health laws as means of gaining coercive, coercive control over those who oppose communist goals. Yes, yes, another uh, gang stalking tactic. Okay, below here is also an excellent trailer for a new documentary showing the left's agenda as it's currently being played out to finally co <coughs> excuse me, conquer the once greatest, freest nation in the world. And I will put this link to uh, http. Uh, dot dot or slash agenda documentary dot com trailer. But anyways, yep, yeah, I'll put that. But you know. Brother Thomas does make a lot of sense. Peace and many blessings. I hope you get something from this here, my friends.